Today we are going to go over the L3 Harris BNVD 1531s. We're going to do kind of a general overview, do a little bit of kind of history, go over some of the specs, and kind of compare them to the PVS 31As, kind of the you know the older brother, big brother uh, to the BNVD 1531s, getting you all the information that you need to know to see if this set of goggles is perfect for your needs and applications. So first off, where did the 1531s come from or why did they come to fruition? So there was a certain set of end users who were looking for a set of binoculars that brought a little bit more to the table than the PVS 31 alphas. What they wanted was they wanted a articulating housing, but they also wanted an adjustable diopter and a built-in onboard IR illuminator. So essentially a hybrid between the PVS 31 alphas and the legacy PVS 15s. So with all of that in mind, L3 went to the drawing board and they came up with the BNVD 1531s. So when you think about all of the R&D and all the T&E that goes into a set of goggles, especially when it comes to L3, you know that they're going to knock it out of the park. No difference with the 31 alphas and as well with these 1531s. So first thing that we're going to do is see what you get when you receive them. Now, one thing here at Listen to Yarms that we, you know, we like to make prevalent to everybody is that we are a distributor of L3 Harris products. So in saying that, we do not open any of the product that we get that comes from L3 Harris for any reason. So when we get them, they come sealed in these plastic bags. They're heat sealed. Whenever you receive them, they are heat sealed in the plastic bag. We do not open them. We do not do anything with them. We can use the data sheets to get all the information that we need to assist our customers in getting the perfect set of goggles for them and their needs and their applications. But when you receive them, you will be the first person to put your hands on them outside of L3 Harris. So just something to keep in mind. So. Let's see what all you get. So, let's take it. You're gonna notice a lot of similarities in what you get with the 1531s as what you get with the 31 alphas because it's almost exactly the same except for the goggles that are inside of there and obviously the user manual. So, once you have cracked open your heat seal bag, take your multi-cam bag out of there. We'll just throw that off to the side. So they come in these multi-cam Kadura cases. Let's hop in here and see what we got. So first thing, obviously, we have BMVD 1531s. All right. So obviously we have articulation. We have our manual gain and power control. We have our battery cap. These do run off a single AA battery. Gives you about 20-ish hours to 30-ish hours, depending on your environment. But separating the differences real quick, obviously you can see right here, you have adjustable diopters because these utilize PVS-14 glass. So kind of jumping ahead of myself, but we'll get back into it. I'm gonna have this kit bag right here. Inside of here, you're gonna have your first set of five batteries, one that you can put on board and four that you can put inside of the cold weather battery pack. You're gonna have your um, spill covers. You're gonna have your cable for your battery pack, your user manuals, daylight caps, sacrificial lenses, um, some demis. Then here on the top, you got this other little compartment. This is your cold weather battery pack. So this is the same battery pack that's used in the PVS 31 alphas, same as used on this. And you can use this battery pack obviously on each one of these as well as GPMV G18s. So they do come with their own battery pack, but you can also use the GPMV G18 battery pack on 31As and on BMVD 1531s if you wanted to set up, because um, those do run off of CR123, whereas these run off a of AA, off four of them. So if you did want to run a different battery type, you can run the GPMV G18 battery pack on any of these systems. Just kind of set that over here, get this kind of out of the way. So whenever you look at the BMVD 1531s, you're going to notice a lot of similarities in this and the 31 alphas. So a lot of people call them the big brother. I'm trying not to call them the big brother, but as you can see um, right here, if we can pop these off this helmet real quick, there is a lot of similarities. Now these have already have installed the bikini covers. And so whenever you look at the differences here, you'll see that we both have manual gain control right here on the front. 
we have our battery, which runs on both of them, run off a of AA. They both articulate. The big glaring difference is, is when it comes to the glass. 31 alphas have a fixed diopter. You have no way of adjusting that. The diopter, or ocular lens is what some people call it, um, is what you are setting to the prescription of your eye. Whereas with the objective side, you're using that for your distance focus. So when you're out in the field, you're gonna be using your objectives to focus on whatever it is that you are focusing on in your environment. But the rear, this is where you can dial this into the prescription of your eye. Now, 31As will work for a vast majority of people, but you know it's great to have that flexibility and knowing that you can really dial this in and get it exactly how you need. So, once you start looking at these goggles, you're gonna, obviously first thing you notice is the absolute just robust build that these that every L3 product has. But these are no different. These are absolutely phenomenal. You have a very, very rugged system that has provided law enforcement military for years of use, and they're absolutely phenomenal, and I'm sure they would be absolutely amazing for whatever needs and applications that you are wanting to use them for. The big thing about 31s and 1531s that we love here at Listen to Arms is manual gain. Manual gain is something that is very prevalent with us. We want the ability to adjust our gain to whatever environment that we are in. And there are a lot of great systems that are out there, but a lot of those have ABC, which is automatic brightness control, meaning that you don't have that adjustment to be able yourself to turn the gain up and down depending upon your environment. And that's something that we really really like, which is why the majority of us here run 1531s and 31As, just because we like to have that ability. We kind of like to be in control, if you will. So one thing about adding the PVS-14 style optics on the 1531s, they had to change the housing. They had to beef it up a little bit. And by doing that to uh, accommodate this housing, or accommodate this glass, sorry, that added a little bit of weight. So how much weight? you're looking at a couple ounces. And when you think about everything else that you're gonna throw on your helmet, that really doesn't make enough of a notion to jump to the 31s. These are coming in with a battery on board at 19.75 ounces. I got my little cheat sheet over here where I'll make sure I get you all the best information. So you're talking sub 20 ounces with a AA battery on board. The, I've, I've ran these for hours on hours on hours and they're absolutely phenomenal. You're not gonna have any issues when it comes to weight. Um, obviously these have the same mill uh, water rating, so you're gonna get your 66 feet for two hours. So you have no concerns there if uh, you are doing any kind of you know water activities and anything like that. Now, the another big separation, we talked about the glass, that was obviously the difference in the 31s, but one big difference is this right here. And that is the built-in IR illuminator. PVS 31 alphas do not have that. Whenever they were designing the PVS 31 alphas, what they were trying to do was make the lightest set of goggles that they could for SOCOM and ounces add up. So the BMVD 1531s do have the IR illuminator, whereas the 31 alphas don't. Another uh, change that was done with the BMVD 1531s compared to the 31As is when you plug in your battery pack on the 31s, it's here on the side. Now, if you have your battery pack plugged in, obviously, you can't take this all this pod all the way up because it will hit into the cable. Now, it's still not a problem. It still completely clears your field of view, but some people have brought that up, you know, uh, you know, not being able to bring it all the way up because of where the, that battery cable attachment is. Well, they thought of that whenever they were doing the design for the 1531s and they moved it to the rear. So that way that it is unimpeded to raise these all the way up. You have a very wide range of articulation on the BMVD 1531s and with having that battery cable uh, plug moved over, it gives you that full range whenever they are on, mounted on the helmet with that cable plugged in. Now, kind of the shining star when it comes to the 1531s and the 31As is the intensifier tubes. These run off a part number 1610 intensifier. Those are all gonna come in mil spec, spot spec. We do here at Listen to Arms have uh, aviation grade option where we can select those out for you. But again, we're not opening those. We are doing that based on the data sheet, but we are getting you the absolute best. And we have to buy to plan for that because a lot of people wanna, you know, they wanna kind of protect their investment 
and get the absolute best that they can. So they want to go for that aviation grade. So we offer that. So the, but that 1610 intensifier coming in mil spec, spot spec, but it gives you 2376 minimum FOM. And, you know, in this day and age, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, we have some spec hunters out there in the world. They're wanting to get just the absolute best that they can, and we completely understand. But 2376 is no slouch at all. I would say there's just about nothing that you can't do with 2376 minimum FOM. But again, that's minimum FOM. It's nothing to see these going into 25, 26, and sometimes even above that 2700 FOM levels to just give you an absolute rock star set. So when you think about that, you're getting an amazing tube, you're getting you know articulation, you're getting manual gain, you're getting AA battery on board, you're getting that battery pack. The battery pack in the manual says it gives you upwards of 49 hours of runtime. I can tell you that I think that they undershot that. Unless you're working in a very, very, very cold environment, you should have no problem getting, you know, 60, 70, sometimes even 80 hours out of those battery packs, depending on how long that you're using them in each setting that's taken that draw from those four double A's in that battery pack. The other great thing about that battery pack is, is that it is also being used as your counterweight on the back of your helmet. Now we have, we designed our Lacenti Arms Improved Counterweight Kit with that in mind. These battery packs are $1,300 now. So we want people to be able to protect their investment. So they do come with Velcro on the back of that battery pack. But for us, that wasn't enough. You never know what you're gonna get into and snag hazards and everything like that. So what we did is we have the Lucenti Arms Improved Counterweight Kit that this will slide down into. It has multiple points of retention. It has Velcro and it also has marine grade shock cord that's going around to a laminate Kadura tabs going onto the bolt to the back of the helmet. Just like this one right here. As you can see, we have our shock cord going over these tabs. The entire counterweight is made out of laminate Kadura. So it is OTB rated and it is, you know, obviously very well built and gives you another layer of retention for these battery packs, which again are $1,300 at this point right now. So the battery, when you're running a battery on board, um, I had to pull this in here, you're looking from anywhere from 15 to 25 hours. Uh, again, depending on your environment for running an onboard battery, and again, 50 hours plus on the battery pack. So, you know, we've kind of talked about the lineage of why that these came to fruition, you know, people wanting a, you know, they wanted the adjustable diopter, they wanted the built-in hour eliminator, and then they went ahead and moved that over. So a lot of people ask, well, which one, and, you know, between the 1531s and the 31As, and that I'll lead you to, shoot us a call. Because, you know, there's not one set of night vision that fits every single application. Now, that's kind of actually why Lacenti Arm started, was kind of hearing, you know, buy this. Why would I buy this product? Well, it's the best. The best for who? Well, it's the best for everyone. I don't believe that in any way, shape, and or form, and neither does anyone else that works here, because we want to have a conversation with everybody, find out what their needs and applications are. That way we can tell you which one we think will work best for you. No different than everybody's fingerprint is different, so is everyone else's eyes. So you might you know, need to have the ability to dial in your doctor to set that to the prescription of your eye. You might not. But you know, another factor is, as currently here in 2023, September of you know, 2023, these are coming in around $2,000 cheaper than the PVS 31As. And the reason for that is the glass. The glass on PVS 31As is gonna give you a overall boost in system resolution. And it, they call it proprietary glass. I don't necessarily like to use the term proprietary glass because the glass that's on 31 alphas is also used on the GPNVG 18 panos. So again, it's just for those two devices, but the glass is not cheap. So the question you have to ask is, do you need an adjustable diopter? If you don't necessarily need it, then do you want to get that extra boost in system resolution? Or do you want to go with 1531s with PVS-14 style optics that have been, you know, they've served our military well for years upon years upon years, and they are no slouch whatsoever. So if you are in between these two, we highly recommend shoot us a call. Let's have a conversation. Let's get you all the information on there to, you know, find out which one of these devices best seeds your, you know, needs and applications. So when you're looking at these, just to do a kind of quick down and dirty, just, you know, in case you kind of zoned out from my talking. So 1531s, 
31As. 31As are going to be just a little bit lighter than the 1531s. The 1531s are going to have that built-in IR illuminator where 31 alphas do not. The battery uh, connection on 31s is on the side. 1531s, it's on the rear. 1531s are going to use PPS 14 style optics, giving you that adjustable diopter, whereas 31As has a fixed diopter, but does obviously have your adjustment for your objectives. So both of them are going to run off the 1610 tube. Both of them are going to get you 2376 minimum FOM, and both of them are coming in in unfilmed white phosphors. So the decision really comes down to you. So if you have any questions about either one of these devices or any devices that we sell or night vision in general, please, don't hesitate. Shoot us a call. We'll have a conversation. We'll find out about your environment. We'll find out about what all that you want to do. Your, your usage in night vision to where we can give you the best information that we can, making you an educated consumer to where that you can, you know, as they say, buy once, kind of cry once. Um, but in saying that, please do not hesitate. Shoot us a call, an email, a DM. Let us get you squared away and get you set up for success when it comes to your night vision journey. And as always, stay safe. Stay dangerous, stay frosty. We'll see you guys out there.